Hello, and welcome to another episode of No Small Roles, a D&D podcast where there are no small roles, and no way you should be listening to this episode without a notepad next to you. Ha <laughs> <laughs> yep. I've opened up Illustrator. <laughs> oh, fancy. <laughs> Make us fancy maps, please. <laughs> I'm David Knight, your Dungeon Master, and I'm joined by these puzzle solvers, so say hi, everyone. Mm. Hello. Hi. hi. Concentrating. I say hello in Rubik's. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking caps on? Yep. Yes, just about. Let's cue the theme tune. Prepare your party of players and polyhedral dice. Your tragic backstory better be worth the sacrifice. Seize your sheets and d20. Let's play D and D. You'll have your characters swagged with daggers in each hand. You've all discussed what you must, but even best laid plans take a turn when checks are missed. Roll initiative. Brandish your blades. Don't fail your saves. No risk too great. No choice too bold. So, having survived an attack from the plant life of the Golden Forest, you all finished your rest before continuing your journey toward the Wingthrup workshop. Gwendolyn raced to the top of a tree for a better view of their destination and noticed an area of the forest that seemed to mark it out. Later, Juna took to the skies to confirm a triangular shape in the trees, and at its centre, two golems standing in a clearing. You reached the boundary of the triangle, and with Orin's detect magic and Gaius using his face, you realised a magical wall stopped anyone passing through unless they held the compass. Oh my gosh. <laughs> when in doubt. <laughs> face first. You made your way to the golems, who detected Juna, Enkidu, and Gwendolyn as potential spouses, whilst Orin and Gaius were both detected as untested wingthrops. Dun, dun, dun. <sighs> you agreed to the test and headed underground into a maze of brass rooms. In the first, the walls closed in until Gaius noticed a scratched clue from a mysterious K. They used a magical immovable table leg to halt the walls and moved on to a room filled with pistons and beyond that, another room with a cube-shaped forge. With everyone clear of the pistons, Orin turned on the engine and created a path to a third room marked with a blue Wingthrop sigil, and Juna tentatively pushed it open. And that's where we pick up. So, Orin, I believe you're still in the little crawl space yeah. in amongst all of the pistons. Uh, Juna, you've just made your way to the blue door and you've opened that, and everybody else is moving through the, the, the stationary pistons as well. So the, the green door that you were about to go through into the forge room, that's now closed. I say green door, the door with the green sigil on it. Mm-hmm not having to say that every time <laughs> yeah <laughs> understood so what's behind the blue door what's behind the blue door i know you've been waiting we've been waiting a whole week david <laughs> we've been waiting a whole two weeks depending on the release schedule i'm not too sure <laughs> <laughs> so through the blue door uh, again it's like the others it's a 60 foot by 60 foot brass room this one however about 30 foot in the floor drops away uh, and from where you're standing, uh, you cannot see another door out. What you can see is that on the, the space before the floor drops out is a, a large empty brass table, probably about 10 feet across. It's quite wide. It's completely empty. And on the other side of the pit, you can see a drawbridge, you can assume, being held upright. Directly above the, uh, the pit in the floor is an open pipe. So where's the open pipe? Sorry? Directly the above ceiling. the pit in the ceiling. Can we peek into the hole? Yeah, the uh, the hole is probably about 30 feet deep. Mm-hmm. 
It almost doesn't look as if it's been like carved out or anything. Like the the brass floors and the brass walls just continue down into this this space, sort of sixty foot across and then thirty foot from where you're stood to the drawbridge. Oh, so the whole like second half of the room is a pit. It's not yeah. like a pit in the middle. Yep. And then on the furthest wall is this drawbridge that, assumedly, if it came down, would let you across the pit. And there might be a door behind the drawbridge, or there might there not? might be, but you can't see one. Can't see. I think there is. Can I do another check to see if there is a nice little clue from K, please? Yeah, make an uh, investigation check. <gasps> Natural 20! I'll show it to you so that you believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Vicky, that doesn't prove anything. <laughs> that makes me laugh so much, just picking up the dice. <laughs> um, as you uh, sort of explore the room a little bit, uh, and especially in the space that you can walk before the pit, mm-hmm. you don't notice any markings from K, but there are words on the walls. Oh, Ooh. what are the words? There are quite a lot of them. Ooh. Oh. oh. As you start scanning around, they're lined up along the walls on either side of the table basically. So there's mm-hmm. this, this table in the, the space that you can walk around, and on the two walls on either side are these these rows of words. Uh, with the 20 as well, having a quick scan, you start to like gather them together in your head. One set of words are definitely types of wood. Another set of words are types of spells. And the third set, you're not sure. It's a, it's a whole different range of creatures and parts of creatures. There's uh, 24 words altogether. And I can read them out to you if you wish. Yes, please. Yes, please. Go for it. So, prepare your notepads. The different types of wood are Tearland Willow, Deadholt Oak, Ironwood, Elder Root, Cantorian Pine, Nothic Kingwood, Ailish Hemlock, and Ebony Common. Oh, I think Daryl's just typed it up into the... Brilliant. Well done, Daryl. That's oh, a genius good, idea. Oh, I cannot... I can't write far, that far. Yeah, yeah, I, I, want, write I wanted to far. challenge myself. <laughs> I got four written down. Was that the challenge? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we you passed. passed so, yes. <laughs> and Gwendolyn is considered now a wing thrup. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the spells. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, there are eight spells. I'm relying on you, Daryl. Uh, the first is motivational speech. Then Phantom Steed, Sea Invisibility, Water Walk, Daylight, Dispel Magic, Life Transference, and Misty Step. My sister did a uh, journalism degree and they had to do like um, shorthand tests. Yeah. <laughs> We're yeah. in one of those. It's, just, it's like a language itself. It's like Thieves Cant. Yeah. I mean, you get, yeah, you get yeah. a whole qualification at the end of this episode. Did you not know that? <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> so then the uh, the uh, final category, mm-hmm. and that is this like extra sort of hard to define for you all. Mm-hmm. The first is grey ooze sample, air elemental, sprite wings, water elemental, fire elemental, green dragon bile, storm elemental, and will o wisp. Okay, first thought: there are eight spells. Are they from eight different schools of magic? You're welcome to make an Arcana check, Ori. Yes, please. Can I? Can I give him a hand? Because I also would like. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That. yeah and give him advantage with, with all of you working together. Thank you. Also, oh, question: uh, Have you all moved into the blue room? Have you closed the blue door behind you? I think we have, right? So yeah. 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 And on the back side of it is oh, yeah. a is a gold sigil. Oh yeah, that works. Yeah, no, no, that's that's yeah. Yep, that's as My, expected. I, I don't, I don't. I have a fear that I'm not going to share because that is meta gaming. But I have a fear. <laughs> hey, Junie, you look like you've got a fear on your face. What's that? <laughs> um, that was a non-natural twenty on my arcana with <gasps> Juna assisting. Oh. Thank you, Juna. Yeah, basically every single one of the spells is from a different school of magic. Yeah, so they're from eight schools of magic, and these woods are from all different parts of uh, El Tempia, right? <gasps> yes. yes. Yeah. Because you got like your Ailish and you got your like uh, Dead Holt. Um, and we got, we've got different sort of elements and stuff for this, this last group. There's, a few, you know, of, the, water, uh, a few of the woods are actually from outside of the region. Yeah. So oh. Cantoria, uh, Dead Holt, and Tearland, they're all other known regions in the world. All right. Can I do a history check? Yeah, absolutely. Can I do one as well? It's my proficiency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can both. Yeah, absolutely. 
<laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> a 13 to kind of work out if there's any connection that I would know of about those places. Um, as you're sort of looking at them, you obviously you've worked with your father and he's done a lot of sort of inventing of things and like construction and stuff. Whilst you don't necessarily know if there's any direct connection between those places, you do know that a lot of these woods are incredibly expensive. Mm. And in fact, they're the kind of woods that you would use to make a wand. <gasps> I tell that to the rest of the group. Very expensive. Um, I was just wondering, um, are these ones imbued with specific spells, like the one you got, Gwendolyn? Ooh, it's just yeah. a wondering thought. Do you know what, Enkidu? I was thinking exactly the same. Oh, yeah. Gwendolyn gets out her wand and looks at it and tries to work out what wood it is. Make a... Um, nature? Yeah, a nature check. If only we had three more wands, we could do mm. an inspector those. <laughs> that is not in character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a four... Oh, it's hard. It's brown. It's definitely wood. Um, <laughs> I just can't really tell. I, no. Oh, um, oh, oh, oh. I wonder if, uh, hang on, have I got my woodcarver's tools with me? No. <laughs> no, no. Was it this wand that um, Therisine, no, who at someone took apart a wand? Was it Myra? Um, yeah, it's yes, Myra. This, it has an elemental battery inside it. Uh, Do we hmm. remember what was in the elemental battery? Um, it was kind of fuzzy, bouncing around. I don't remember what particular type of element it was, though. David, Ooh. Um, Ooh. does the um, drawbridge, like the wood of the, on the drawbridge, is it any particular kind of wood or are there, are there any details or... Make a, an investigation check for me, please. Um, I got seven. No, it's hard to say. Like, it is made out of wood. It seems to be reinforced in places with brass, uh, but... Unfortunately, it is it's just wood to you. Okay. Ben's bursting. Ben, you look like you're Ben's about to wet yourself. What's up? <laughs> yeah. So this one, so it does fairy far. So what type of magic is fairy far? Make an arcana check whilst I look at it. Up. Ah! Oh, actually, I can tell you because I I, I cast this spell, don't I? Uh, um, feel free. I'd say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I rolled a I rolled a twenty two. But if you want to, it is an evocation. <laughs> you can just imagine them both saying it at the same time, going, <laughs> "Yeah, evocation, <laughs> evocation, evocation." I, I said it first. I, I, I said it. No, I, I said it at the time. No, I said the E. You I, might have I, said the shun first, but I got the E M first. I reckon. My <laughs> accent is sometimes it's difficult to say words quickly or clearly. <laughs> and we don't remember what kind of elemental was in that. I just remember it being an energy like bouncing around really fast. Oh, Myra just unscrewed the end, didn't she? And we can have a look. Uh, yes. Uh, I can't really see the join, but you've got better instinct for these sorts of things, Orange. Passes it over. Just remember as well, guys, I think it's about not what we bring into the room, but what's in the room already. That solves uh, no, the this is just a way of giving us a clue. Yeah, really. I'm just trying to make the link. It's just nice to know if these are the wood, the battery, so to speak, and the spell yeah. for a wand. That would be good to know that we have a wand that encapsulates those things. I, I, I support mm. This it might then allow us to piece something together from it. Mm, yeah, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps we've got the the wood, the effect of the wand, and how you make it happen. Perhaps that's what all these different things are. Yeah. Can I unscrew the end of the wand? Can I remember mm. how Myra did it? Mm. Make an investigation check to see if you can find how she did it. Mm, Sixteen. Uh, it takes you a fair amount of time and Gwendolyn you start wincing as Orin like is like whacking it against the table in the middle of the room trying to like just like notice bits of it uh but eventually yeah you do see like the smallest line that you like sort of push in Ooh, with is. your fingernail like twist it out and then like the bottom unscrews to reveal a small sort of fuzzy energy bouncing back and forwards oh you're right fuzzy energy what do we reckon does that look like an air elemental to people Juna reaches into the caddy and pulls out the air elemental battery to compare it. Um, what? When did you get that? <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, that must have fallen into the caddy. We don't need to worry about this now, but does it look the same? I am so <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> does it look the same, David? Uh, it looks comparable. The uh, the air elemental that you've got is perhaps a little bit cloudier and less fuzzy. <gasps> so a storm elemental. Mm. 
She, I'm going to put the battery back in the caddy. Goodbye. We're not going to have that come out in the middle of this maze. Thank you very much. Goodness me. <laughs> We've all got sticky fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot we didn't tell everyone that we took that. Yeah. Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Over Juno. Like, oh, oh, oh. We're but in again, trouble. That's what I think Juno would get excited about. Oh, that. definitely. Oh, no, hell, yeah. So we've got basically the things to make wands. How does that relate to here? Is mm. there anything else, David, in the room to indicate mm. that what we need to, like, I mean, presumably we need to get a drawbridge down, but is there anything yeah, else? If anyone wants to make an investigation check with advantage whilst everyone has a quick look. Yeah? Yeah, you go for it, Juno. Are you happy for me too, yeah? Yeah, oh, please do. What's on the table? Nothing. Uh, the table itself is just a, a brass table, four legs, um, Orin, you get the impression that it's some kind of workbench. Oh. 18 for investigation. Nice. 18. Um, as you're sort of looking around, you do notice that behind, tucked behind the pipe, but above the drawbridge, is an arcane marking, sort of a rune, just mm-hmm. slowly rotating where it is. Hmm. Do, do I recognise the rune? You can make an uh, arcana check. If you'd like to try and figure out. Yeah. Am I able to help Juno? You can, if she's pointed it out to you, yeah. Okay, so that is an unnatural 23. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Get in. Um, so whilst you don't necessarily know the exact spell, you do know that this rune is holding the drawbridge in place. Mm-hmm. So what I think is that that rune is holding the drawbridge in place... So mm. maybe we need to destroy the rune or something. Yeah, or activate, or activate it, it perhaps. Or activate it, yes, absolutely. I've got a bar of soap in my bag. I'm just going to cut <laughs> off a corner of it and mm. throw it down the hole. Mm-hmm. It falls the 30 feet and then boop, bounces on the floor. Oh, we see the floor. Oh, yeah, you can see the bo- you see the bottom of it. Uh, okay. It's, about, it's like a, a 30 foot deep empty swimming pool. Yeah, I was wondering if there was like an infinity thing where it'd like fall into the pit and then come back right. through the pipe. Mm-hmm. Can Gwendolyn go and investigate the words a bit closer Mm -hmm. how close are you getting to them and are you touching any of them i do want to touch one (laughs) yeah i love these leading questions from david i know right that's i just need to confirm yeah do you want to stick your head inside the jaws of the beast or not Um, (laughs) if i was to touch one of these words maybe one of the wood which one do you think i should touch I've heard Ailish. The Ailish wood is meant to be like a really valuable and uh, beautiful wood. Yeah, I mean, they're all pretty pricey and well sought after. So let's go Ailish. And she presses where it says Ailish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Ailish hemlock. As you sort of touch it, you realise that you can push it slightly. And it pops out Mm -hmm. as a little drawer from the wall. (gasps) And purple acid starts pouring out of the pipe. Of course it does. Oh, I did a wrong thing there, suggesting that one. What if she pushed it? Is there anything in the drawer? Uh, Yes, there is a wand. There is a wand in the drawer. I want to know what's happening. Uh, And even whilst you're deciding what to do with the the drawer and the wand, the the pipe stops. Gaius, as you're stood closest to the pit, throwing your soap in, uh, you see that it's filled up probably about 10 foot with this purple acid. Oh, it's 30 foot drop, isn't it? Yep. Okay. So we've got two more wrong choices. Two more mistakes. <laughs> and it fills up to the to, the, to us. Went hands away from the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I have the theory. I think we need to build the correct one to be able to dispel the magic in that rune above. Yep. Perhaps we need to do a dispel magic wand. Just checking, Gwendolyn. Did you take out the wand? Not yet. Okay. Like, so the drawer is just open at the moment? Yeah. Okay. Because I've fine. kind of just gone, oh no! Don't touch anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh. So are we matching up the material of the wand to the magic that the wand creates yeah. and the component that makes the spell? Yeah. Or the yeah. wand? How yeah. are we supposed to know? I mean, like, that's how spells work, right? They have well, components, most of them. Maybe and the, the wands answer have an effect. Go on, is sorry, not in Ari. this room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe this is the final room and we need oh, no. to get the answers from other rooms first. Ah, oh, crap. Is there a way back? Can I open the door? Can, can I take a moment? Juna is going to write the words on a piece of paper so that they have them with them when mm-hmm. they go. Um, as you go to try walking back into the piston room, that gold door is locked. Okay. No. Nope. Revise that plan. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Juno, you were looking at... Oh, oh, Gwen, who was looking at the symbol? Um, uh, me. What, what do we know about the symbol thing up there? It's an arcane rune that is holding the drawbridge up, from what I can tell. Is my detect magic still up? Probably not, because you cast it back in the first room, didn't you? Um, I can 
bring that back up again if we want. Might be able to find out what type of magic is on that symbol. Is the symbol within 30 foot of me, David? Would I be able to? Uh, yeah, you can do an arcana check on it if you like to see if you recognize any of like the patterns in it. Okay. Can I just try it? Yeah, before I fiddle with the goggles, can I just try a yeah, little arcana yeah. check? Just on the off chance. Not feeling particularly arcanary, but 17. It's uh, from what you can gather, it's perhaps a kind of enchantment. Not necessarily a enchanting a person, but it is definitely enchanting the drawbridge to act in this way. Okay, it's enchantment. Does anyone know if dispel magic is an enchantment spell? Um, Because I think Gwen saying that might be the spell to use sounds like it makes sense. Well, just, I mean, you know, magic isn't really my strong point, but looking at all of them, that seems Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. the one that might do what we need it. Like you said, if if we're able to stop that or, you know, get rid of that rune, then that's what's going to drop the drawbridge. Mm-hmm. That's a good shout. DM, is there a sense that the arcane rune is currently casting? Like, the spell is currently in effect? Yeah, it's definitely activated. It's almost like pulsing and slightly rotating mm-hmm. uh, on the ceiling. So it's definitely an active spell. Uh, I don't think the spell magic is like a enchantment because it's not trying to charm someone. It's trying to... This- Trying to stab something. So if you were able to dispel magic on it, wouldn't it just dispel it? Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it surely in theory dispel any type of magic? Yeah. Yeah, maybe because like, cause that, cause that rune is the thing that's keeping the drawbridge up so that we need, yeah, like you say. Yeah, we, we need, need to, to yeah. release it to let it down. To di- dispel that thing up there. Yes. So in which case, if we want dispel magic, well, I suppose, do we want to find out if that's right now? Do we want to go and press the dispel magic word? We better be right on that. Do we want to have a look through the other spells? Are there you, you lot of the magic people? Uh, if you look at those, do you think any of the other ones would be useful? The drawbridge is flush to the door. You said, David. So literally, the it needs to be the drawbridge coming down. Yeah, it's it flush cool? to the wall. Yeah. Mm. To be fair, looking at the names of some of these spells here, none of them would be really helpful to us. The only one that no. would be helpful to us would be the dispel magic book. So I think mm. you're right there, Gwen. Oh, I, I agree. Go me. Magic. Well, <laughs> let's see if it works first. Well, yeah. or or Misty Step. No, but mm. the drawbridge is flush to the door, Orin. So if we Misty yeah, Step, we, can tele- we, we just fall get- into no. the thing. Yeah. And you can only teleport to a place that you can see. It yeah. would just fall oh, into okay. the ground. Guy presses the spell magic. Go for it. Cool. Uh, and again, like it sort of pushes in a little bit and then pops open. And more purple acid pours from the <laughs> pipe above. <laughs> oh. Take the wand. This sucks. Is there a wand inside? Inside is actually a a scroll, which I don't know whether or not you want to look in it, but looking down into the pit, that's filled up now about 20 feet worth of acid. There's only about 10 foot of space before the acid starts spilling out to your feet. One more wrong answer. So, Do we know it's a wrong answer, though? Do we, we just... No, we don't know. We don't. That's right, oh, Gwendolyn, we don't. Um, Akita would look at the scroll. Mm-hmm. Yep, you pull the scroll out, nothing happens. Uh, you roll it out, and it shows a wand with specific runic carvings all along it, which you sort of realise is the design for the wand. Right. So we could probably... What material is the table made out of? Brass. Brass. Brass, Brass, damn it. Um, There is a wand in here. I just didn't touch it. Uh, I don't know. Am I tall enough to look into the drawer and see what runes are on? Yep. Um, Peeking in, Gwendolyn, the the piece of wood that you can see is completely blank. (gasps) It needs carving on. Yeah, Yeah, it needs carving Mm. the the spell on it but we need the material don't we to make the spell effect i assume we'll need the the battery yeah so let, let's let's do the runes first and then we do the pressing of the one we think and then quickly we stick the battery in and go well and just give it a go and hope it works well well we need to think about that one but in the meantime don't we need to like draw the runes or oh, and you're pretty good at that sort of thing yeah yeah on the wand but we don't know that this wood is the right wood to use with this particular spell do we nope, no but unless you want to have a go at like looking at some of the other woods that's all no, we got. I, I i don't know how we work it out uh, i mean if those of you who can do the flying thing be ready with flying by the time we do a third thing uh that might be useful to stop us getting burnt by acid on our feet just mm-hmm. in case good shout between myself and miss Ethel, i assume we can all fly really oh do you and one other person? Yeah, I can cast it on... Oh, no, I can't cast it at fourth level. Uh, that, that's not me. Oh, no, you can't. I, can't. I can okay. only do it. Well, I can uh, cast it but, on but two like, people. But, like, pick us up as well? Would that work? I mean, we could, but we wouldn't go very fast, but as long as we wouldn't be touching the ground. Yeah, so that's the point. Just, that could just work. as a, you know, plan B. I, Juna would know this. Mm. 
can I cast fly and then cast fly again on someone I think it's else? concentration. Is Depends. That... Is it That's concentration? What I did. Oh, it's concentration. Yeah, it's concentration. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, so I can't. Yeah, I assumed last time, because you did that when you were looking for the hands, I assumed that you'd dropped down to get Juno yeah. flying. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, only it's concentration. But, okay, maybe, maybe we don't need the battery if we've already got the right battery in our stash. Yeah. Let's try that, yeah, without touching the yeah. wall. So... I'm taking this wand out of here and we're going to try and put the runes yeah. on it? Yeah, sure. Okay, Gwendolyn picks up the wand. Yep, and uh, nothing happens. Okay. Mm. Guy pops up and goes, oh, actually, um, yeah, I was in town um, when we were earlier on, um, back in when we went to, when it was the, um, oh, the... the, the... In Rudderville. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I forget the name of the place. No, no, no. The last time we were in a town, if that's where you Yeah, mean. what's the name of the place that we, where we met our wizard friend? Our wizard friend, Rostel. Um, Ro- uh, I don't know why I'm joining the conversation. I'm not there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> like we've met, we've met a wizard in every town. <laughs> Do you mean Heron Ilwin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. We, 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 Vernac Rice. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Vernac Rice. That's it. When we went shopping, yeah, I managed to snag a few wands as well. I got these three wands here, and I just realised that we actually do have a few extra, like maybe like batteries. What are they doing in Jim's tea caddy? those all along i will take them out of the tea caddy yeah 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 just to keep like you know them safe and stuff i completely forgot <laughs> about them um so yeah we've got these three extra batteries oh. as well in case we get a bit worried gaius looking at the ones that you've pulled out yeah they've all got empty holes in the bottom oh they all don't have batteries in but do any of them have rooms that that match all of them seem the... to have yeah carved designs onto them but not that match the dispel magic design that you've got in front of you when you bought these three ones <laughs> oh so what did yeah. they tell you they each did because they must have told you when you uh bought them in the shop well they said that the first one um would make me look more handsome and then they said the second one would um make my voice sound like an angel's and then they told me that the third one could turn a duck into a squirrel and i just thought that was very cute um <laughs> And I'm I, I I did not look insight check. Yeah, I would like I would also like to see if I believe. I guys. know, right? <laughs> Go for it, and guys, you can. Um, it's too much coming out of nowhere. <laughs> persuade or deceive, whichever you prefer. Twenty one. Eleven. Yeah. Nineteen. Twenty two. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I rolled um a twelve, and it gave me a. Oh no, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Ooh. Ah, it's deception. Sorry. Twenty one. Okay. Still. Oh. Wow. Just a yeah. good liar. That's, that that means I don't know, right? If I got the same as him. There's it's suspicious, Juna, but you can't say for sure. Yeah. It sounds ridiculous, and that line of like, is this so ridiculous that it's true? Okay. I'm not sure. I was swindled, clearly, because they don't have batteries in them. So you know what? Look, you never get batteries provided when you buy something from a shop. We all know this. Ah. Wait, hang on. <laughs> I assume Gwendolyn's been able to cast Fairy Fire with a wand because of the battery inside, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you're ma- already magically inclined, can he just cast a spell? Would the energy come from the person holding it? No, but if we put Gwen's battery into a different wand, we could use it. But if they're not the right spell anyway... Yeah, true. If the they're runes don't match the runes we need... Yeah, mm. fine. It just feels like the Wingthrups are people that enjoy doing things with the tools provided. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I still find it like strange that they would give someone an unachievable task. No, I agree. I completely agree that it is achievable with the stuff in here. We have just maybe brought some extra goodies with us, and there's nothing to stop us also using the extra goodies. No, of course I, not. But no. I don't deny that it will be solvable without the extra goodies, but maybe we've got a little shortcut there. So why don't we try carving this dispel magic one then? Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to give that a go. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you've got quite a steady hand and the tools, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, let us know how we can help. Okay, can I have a look at the wand and the bit of paper and figure out what I might need to do, mm-hmm. what skills I might need to employ on it, because Oren is fingering his little collection of pills that he keeps in his pocket in case he wants to yeah. <laughs> give himself a little um, boost again. <laughs> actually, looking at it, you reckon you could achieve this without popping a pill. Oh. You'd need some kind of carving tools, and then you'd probably need some sort of like uh, more detailed uh, cartography. Uh, just to like etch in those last magical runes, but actually, sort of carving this in, it's fairly straightforward. Okay. Uh, you can imagine that, like, yeah, the um, the design itself isn't hugely complicated. It's a little bit isometric. There are a few swirls, uh, and to be honest, you've just got to be careful that you don't break the wood, uh, as 
Gwen noted there was only one in the draw. Ooh. Okay, so you only get one go at this, guys. Hey, what else are we going to do? Go for it. Oh, yeah, I just give it a go. Um, do, uh, do I feel like I've got the right tools on me? Um... I hand in my knives. <laughs> oh, these are big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, feel free to, like, dismantle them. Like, refine them. Do what you want. Okay, thank you. They're not precious. Um, I have currently got Tinker's tools on me. I've got Smith's tools on me. I've got Thieves' tools on me. Uh, otherwise, in an hour, I can have whatever I think I need to do it. Does it look like I need woodcarver's tools, David, do I think? Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, hang tight, everyone. <laughs> Can you create woodcarver's tools? Yeah. Yeah. Are we here for an hour? Yeah. Do you want me to uh, check what's up that pipe in the in the top? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Just because can't hurt? I'm assuming lots of acid. <laughs> oh, is that where the acid has come yes. out? <laughs> the, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I thought, I thought the acid was coming out of the drawer into and spilling. Uh, no, sorry. out of the pipe no. into the pit. Yeah, so Juna would know that. That's fine. <laughs> Wreck on that. That was just... Me, Vicky, misunderstanding where the poison was coming out of. Is it that, like, it's going to be the same number? So, like, Dispel Magic is, like, the one, two, three, four, five, fifth draw in that category. So it's going to be, like, the fifth category in every single other. Sorry, fifth one in every single other. Sixth. So, so, um, whilst I've read it out in that order, they are just scattered Uh, across things. Yeah. Oh, gosh. So there's nothing else in the room that, like, could discern, like, what distinguishes... No. I mean, whilst Orin is prepping his woodcarver's tools, Mm -hmm. the rest of you are welcome to to make some checks and, like, discuss the Mm. problem, if you like. Um, And, Orin, the other thing is that you think it's probably going to take you about an hour to, like, delicately carve the thing, so... Uh, I need a couple of hours, then, an hour to get the right tools and then an hour to do this, so uh, you knock yourselves out, and I'll set up myself at the table, get my travelling workshop out, pop it on the table, get to work. So, yeah, as as the the other four of you are... (laughs) <laughs> like looking at like looking over this list over and over and over that June has written down. Uh feel free to make just straight intelligence checks. Uh, okay. Might as well. Hello, seven minus one <laughs> equals six. <laughs> Need to get rid of this thing. Fourteen? I got a natural twenty. Yes. Yes, yes guys. Of course you did, you wing throw you. Wing yes, yes. fellow wing throw. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got an eight, but it doesn't really matter. I an just eight. Thought I'd say that, yeah. So as you're looking over them, you've got this idea of the different schools of magic in your head, and you start listing those out to yourself as well. You realise, looking at the woods, that they begin with the same letters. Oh. And again, pairing them then up with spells, you're like, yep, each one of these spells is from a different school of magic. So if you wanted to make something abjuration you'd likely use the wood starting with a oh okay and dispel magic was what type of magic abjuration so we would want so that's like, good that would be maybe yeah. air elemental yeah. i don't know what that accent was air elemental the only thing that does slightly confuse you is that none of the sort of power sources category beyond the air elemental starting with a none of the others seem to line up with that logic so you you don't know necessarily what's happening there but at least ailish hemlock does yes. line up with i don't know how you did that but yes gaius you really are a wingthrop yes <laughs> Oh my god, we got the right we got the right wood and the right thing. We got the right wood. (laughs) Oh my god. No way. (laughs) Wait, wait, what? You said the right wood, guy. Holy crap, I did. (laughs) You did? I I did. (laughs) Before you even worked it out. (laughs) Well, I I thought I'd give you a bit of time to catch up with my um with my suggestion there. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll let you guys work out the next one because I'm pooped. Okay, here's a theory then. If dispel magic is what type was it? Abjuration, right? Abjuration. And we want a spell that's neutral of any elements. Would a great use sample fit that bill? Because the others seem to have some kind of element attached to him. Well, there's the green dragon Green dragon bile. 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 And a will o' wisp. Kind of... Yeah. Damn it. But will o' wisp will be... Mm. No. Maybe I thought I was reaching a bit here. Ha, ha, oh. is, 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 there one, is there one of those things that's the odd one out? So, like, you've got storm, you've got water, you've got grey ooze sample, a will-o'-wisp. What's that again? It's like a sort of ghost spirit yeah. kind of thing. I say that one because it's, like, ethereal. You can't, like, can't really touch it. Yeah, but the same goes for the air elemental as well, kind of? Oh, uh, elemental's really packed a punch, if you remember. Yeah. Almost blew us up. We've not heard any mention of 
any other types of things for batteries other than elementals. Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. When Myra was talking about things. Mm. So... That's not to say that the other things aren't power sources, but... Um, yes. And we think there might be storm in the fairy fire wand. Really not sure from the looking at it. Can I have a, another look at it to see if I can yeah. work out, DM, what that element is? Yeah, make an arcana check on it. Oh, bloody hell. I'll let you have advantage because, again, all four of you are working on it for over a, like a few hours. You've got two hours. Thank you. <laughs> 19. <laughs> 19. Yeah. So interesting, as you're looking at this like fuzzy energy, you realise it's actually really similar. It's a really similar colour and a really similar like effect that comes out of the end of the wand. As in this wand, when, when you cast Fairy Fire with it, it almost looks like okay. what's trapped in the battery. Mm-hmm. I'd relay that, obviously. So there's a fairy in there? Sprite wings. Yeah, or there, there is some sort of Fairy Fire. Is there anything that we saw when Ferrisine like made the thing to dispel magic back at her house is there anything on this list that like we are reminded of that she, when she made that contraption no even without making a check cool not that you didn't see the kind of battery that she used because uh, it was sort of chunky and powered the whole thing it just it it didn't fit any of the examples here that you would say so fairy fire looks a bit like fairy fire what of this looks like it's taking magic away. Maybe the grey use sample. I don't know. Something that smothers. Do any of us know what green dragon bile does? Or grey use for that matter? You're all welcome to make, again, arcana checks for that. All of us or just one of us? Uh, one of you with advantage. I, I'm quite happy to make it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, go please. for it. My arcana is not bad. Uh, good job I had advantage because I rolled a natural one first. 16? Um... So you know green dragons are associated with poison? Oh. From a 16? Yeah, you can tell that, like, whereas, like, a a classic red dragon breathes fire, a green dragon will breathe poison. Now, I know that green dragons produce poison, Mm -hmm. and poison is what is pouring out of these other two. Ah, that's that's acid. Oh, is it acid? It's a different thing, unfortunately. Oh, sorry. I wonder if we try and match up maybe some of the ones that seem more obvious then it might be a more of a process of elimination yes we've got one more try though before it starts to yeah i mean i think she means theory craft it yeah so for example misty step what lines up with misty maybe air air or storm willow wisp okay um water walk would Maybe, uh, I guess, water, water? elemental. Mm-hmm. Phantom Steed might be mish- Misty Step because Phantom Steed is like, is like my, I, I spoke to a wizard in a tavern once who told me that it was like conjuring like a, an ethereal creature that would become like a horse. Those are both spells. <laughs> Don't know if that helps you. <laughs> I say in the middle of, of fiddling with a wood, wood tool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Phantom Steed and Misty Step are both spells. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, Phantom Steed maybe would be Willow West because it's from another plane. Like you say, like, the the the, the Storm Elemental would be maybe Misty Step. Daylight maybe Fire Elemental. Consuming fairies. Um, something um, to consume a life, life transference. To, con- like, have your life consumed to imbue into another's. Could be, like, Sprite Rings, maybe. Bit of the Fae. Mm. Or like you said... With ooze smothering things, maybe that's. Can can we? Can I see what we know of grey ooze? I mean, you're all welcome to make another intelligence check each. Okay. Twelve. Seven. Non natural twenty. Boom! Nice. Yeah. I got fifteen. Gwendolyn, as you're looking over this list, uh, and again, this is like a couple of hours of Orin building tools and then using those tools. You don't think there's any connection. Oh. between the power sources and the rest of it beyond perhaps the effect as as in it just needs a power source it doesn't matter which that's the only conclusion you can come to with a with a 20 i wonder if we're just overthinking it and maybe it just needs a power source and that any will do i say try air then cuz go go through the air so meh and what happened to using the batteries that we already have and not risking another vat of acid? Yeah, that. I mean, the only one we have is my fairy fire We've one. We've got a couple more. Oops, sorry. 
Mm. Oh, but will we be able to make them small enough to fit into a wand? Because aren't they quite big? Yeah, they're like yeah. big batteries. Oh, sorry, ignore Yeah, me. the one that Juna and Orin, <laughs> the ones that Juna and Orin stole, they were like hefty sorry, things. Sorry, like I was using a lathe, I wasn't really listening. Yeah, they're like car battery size <laughs> compared to like a double A. Orin, yeah. Orin you, just, you just keep on doing sorry, what you're doing, Sorry, trying right, to multitask, Orin? it doesn't work. <laughs> it's like trying to squeeze a car battery into a, into a TV remote, like, <laughs> come on, get in there. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I've mean, got the reduce in spell. In theory, the um, amounts of acid that have been filling up, we shouldn't be in danger by using the last bit of acid, and then we've got a second wand. Yeah. I say do it. Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. Tuna's going to go and press air because she hasn't done any like mindless pressing. <laughs> oh <Yeah>. my gosh. <laughs> so, um, Orin, as you're sort of stood at the, the table, sort of carving away, Juna tottles over, hits a, hits a thing on the wall. Uh, and the pipe starts pouring ah. out uh, more purple acid in front of you. But uh, Juna, as the uh, the word in- indents slightly and then pops open into a drawer, you pull out a very small, similar to the one that, that Gwendolyn's got, but uh, it's sort of swirling smoke inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, a small cylindrical battery. The acid does fill up right to the top of the pit. Ooh. And you're oh. looking at it thinking, if you press anything else... It's going to start overflowing, but at the moment, it's just like lapping against the edge of that ridge. Let's hope we've got this right, eh? Yes. Yeah. And it'll be really cool to have a dispel magic wand. Yes, it would be. And I give Orin a pointed look like... <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, so, Orin, can you just make a quick uh, woodcarver's tools check, please? Why, yes, I can. Um... I feel like so much hangs on what's about to happen. Um, so just to double check, am I using dex, intelligence? What am I using for this particular wood carving mm, trick? If you could use intelligence because you're trying to get the design correct rather than just trying to be... Okay. There's magic involved, basically. 24. Oh. I roll really bad. <laughs> get out. Go away. Unfortunately, the one snaps in three. Like, oh, no. 24 rolling DC bad. of 50. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I do get to, you see, I do get to add 11 <laughs> to my roll. Wow, that's oh, crap. Wow. Yeah, you take your time over it um, to the point that... Did I say 23? Take a little bit. 24. Yeah, 24, good. Sorry, I thought my maths had gone wrong. Um, sort of the carving is, is beautifully finished. Like, there's not a single splinter anywhere that isn't where it's meant to be. And... For everybody else that sort of comes over to have a look, it looks better than the Vondel one. <laughs> mm. oh. Well, 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 Orin. There you go. That looks all right, I think, doesn't it? I knew you could do it. Yeah. I did. Thanks, Enkidu. Right, just need a battery. Juna says, it's air. Let's see what happens, shall we? Yep. I reckon that goes in there. I will try and insert the air elemental battery. Yep, it slides straight in. Sort of screws in shut, and you can't see the seam. Nice, neat. Mm. Can, can I just check that we've made sure my fairy fire wand is all fixed up as well? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, <laughs> thanks, thanks. Sorry, everyone's long. tampered with my wand enough. I mean, there we thank go. You. Get that back, yeah. to Gwen. No, uh, thanks for lending me that. Guy, do you want to put the wands back in here, or are you going to keep them about your person? Uh, yeah, I'll put them back in the case for now. We can maybe find some batteries for them well, in the time. Here. It's interesting because you've got three ones in need of a battery and it turns out me and Juna might have a couple of batteries. Oh, no, they're too big. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, hey, you know, I'm going to go back to that shop. Okay. They swindled me. What if once we drop the drawbridge, somebody flies back and nabs a few batteries from the drawers? Might make some more acid. Yes, but if they're fly... Oh, yeah, no, maybe it'll flow into the room where... Never mind. No, I like to think. Mm. <laughs> yes. Anyway, like... Oh, Alright, yeah. you've worked extra hard yeah. on this. You go ahead. Yeah, let's get that. I'm gonna wave the wand towards the thing and mm-hmm. attempt to dispel it. Mm-hmm. As you uh, sort of activate the wand, all of the little runes and intricate isometric design that you've just carved in suddenly light up with a bluish energy. And out of the end of the wand comes wisps of of smoke, almost like whirlwind, like. And they hit the the rune above the drawbridge, and for a brief moment it's sort of shrouded in cloud, and when it all dissipates, the rune is gone. <gasps> the drawbridge starts coming down. Yes! yes! Let's go across the drawbridge really fast! To reveal a door with a black sigil on it. There was a black sigil. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Oh no. no. Black sigil. Oh no. Oh. We're going oh, back to the staircase, no. I think. We don't know. Or into the forge room. 
We'll see. We'll see. Let's uh, let's Hang on. try that. Well, well, what about the door behind us? Is that unlocked as well? Yeah, you go give it a quick push, and that uh, the gold door back into the piston room has unlocked. Which is it? Forward, forward. Grace here, keeping you updated with all things No Small Roles related. Whilst our tea-loving party stew over the puzzles of the maze, I'm here to remind you that we'll be recording our next instalment of No Small Questions on the 21st of May at 8pm BST. That's British summertime, but you wouldn't know it from looking out the window right now. It's so cold. (laughs) But if you want to question Chris on Gaius's recent revelations or pick the brain of our devious DM David, be sure to get your questions to us by the 20th of May to have them considered for the show you can get your questions to us via social media we are at no small roles on twitter and instagram you can find us on facebook by searching no small roles and follow our discord link in the show notes to add your question to our dedicated questions thread patreon subscribers will as usual be invited to join us live in the zoom so if you want to get in on the fun as well head over to patreon.com forward slash no small roles patreon is a marvelous way to show your support for the show and to get more no small roles content in your life other ways to support us include recommending us to your chums your pals your mates or spreading no small roles joy on your social media and of course the podcast holy grail a review your quest intrepid listener is to find a platform such as itunes Podchaser, or another mysterious podcasting place that i don't know about yet please tell me and help other big rollers like yourselves roll all the way to that play button anyway that's all from me for now let's get you back to the maze it's amazing I'm going to run across the drawbridge and push the black door open. What do I see? You see another room. Oh! Oh. What's in that room? So, beyond the black door is, again, another 60 foot by 60 foot brass room. Mm -hmm. In the middle of this room is an obsidian slab that divides the room in two. You can see that you can get around it, but actually all that you can see in the centre of the room is this is this slab of obsidian. In each corner on either side of the, the, the door that you're coming through is a golem stood with a crossbow in hand. Ooh. And you can see to the farther corners two more golems. So there's four golems in total. Mm-hmm. All with crossbows. All with crossbows. There are also two doors out of this room. At the uh, To your left is a door with a green sigil on it. And to your right is a door with a white sigil on it. And can we see the back of the door we've come in, or do we have to close it to know that? Uh, you can sort of, as you're coming in, sort of, yeah, tot around and have a quick look. Um, and that is a blue sigil on the back of that. That matches up. If that, if our theory is correct, we go through this room and end up in the wall room or the piston room. No, that's wrong. Or the cube forge room. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So the room we haven't seen yet is the red room. Yeah. So it's a cube. Is it a cube? Hmm. Is it a cube? No. What? Uh, no. no. Ignore. Hang on. Ignore. No. It is a cube. <laughs> it's a cube. Yeah, that does make sense. It's just that there's not always a door to link yeah. the square yeah. to the other side of the cube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You realise you're inside of a cube. Yeah. yeah. You're in a cube room inside a cube maze. Okay. Well, do we have a clear path back through to be able to see potentially what this red room is because that's the only that's the only one we've not seen seen. you're right yes Mm. well the doors are open so we can get through to back to the piston room but at the moment it's blue and green we can get through there but i reckon david do i reckon with the pistons moving there's a way to get blue and red together in the piston room oh yeah like again if if someone were to to start the the pistons and stop them at the right point they could have both the blue and the red doors accessible so there's a way of doing that should we hold the do we all want to go back through or do we want to hold doors open? Wait, what are we doing? I'm confused. The only room we haven't seen in this cube is the red yeah. room. So we want to see what's happening in the red mm. room. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sure. So we can kind of hover hover in this room with the drawbridge. Yeah. Yes. Then we'll be able to go into there. Uh, we want to leave that room you've just discovered beyond the drawbridge for now. 
then, Juna, what you've just described to us? Yes. Okay, so we're all staying in the drawbridge room and then someone or something is going to go back into the, the piston room, turn the lever until it's the... Um, the red and the blue doors yeah. The red and the blue door. And then we're going to go see what's inside the red yeah. door. Yeah. Okay, yes. cool. Let's do that. Yes, yes, yes. Who's going to go and get the piston then? Um, Orin, did you want to do I don't mind doing it again if we want it. Yeah, go for it. Only if you're happy to I'm do happy. it. I'm happy. It wasn't my favourite thing, but I'm happy to give it another go. You said you had to be really good with your hands, yeah. right? Cool. Hmm. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so Orin makes his way back through the uh, the draw over the drawbridge, uh, through a gold door into the piston room, crawls his way round into the crawl space, and with everybody very much clear, in completely a completely different room, Orin turns it on. Can you make a quick sleight of hand check, please? Yep. I nearly made myself some new sleight of hand gloves that would help with this, and I didn't. So, Can a mage hand give him assistance? Uh, no, it's just one switch. So okay, fine. it's less about, like, sort of particular and more about timing. Got you. Eleven. Eleven. Let's roll it, guys. What happens with an eleven? I roll a number. Um, so as you pull it, uh, all of the pistons stop, and the only door that is accessible now is the blue door. Oh, bother. Uh, into the drawbridge room. Uh, can I try again? You are welcome. Turn it on and off again. Make another sleight of hand check. Oh, that's better. 21. Uh, unnatural 21. 21, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like you're starting to see like the pattern in sort of the pistons as they go. So as you sort of watch, you wait and crank the thing off. And as they slow down to a stop, both the red and the door, or blue door are accessible now. Ah, there we go. Right. Come on, guys. Ah, clear now. I'm running so fast. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm so eager to see what's in this room. Um, I'm going to keep that door, the blue door, open until we've got mm-hmm. the red door open. Good shout. I don't know if it actually makes a difference, but just in case. Mm-hmm. And I'll stay in the middle until everyone's through, just in case anything turns on. I'm going to open the red door. So through the red door, again, it's another 60 foot by 60 foot brass room. Shocking. Shocking. <laughs> Shocking <laughs> behaviour. Who would have thought it? Listen, they've got a style. They're going to stick to it. Hmm. How wing throw. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At the other end of the, the room, the furthest wall is completely dominated by a massive, massive machine wires, pipes, gold plating. On either side of this machine are very large, empty glass cylinders that, seeing them, they look like massive batteries, but they are empty. Each At the bottom of each cylinder is a thick cable that's coiled up on the floor, and at the end is a heavy clamp on each. Uh, and there is a control panel in the centre of the machine, but you can't see what it says from where you are, from the door. To your left, there is a large iron sphere. It looks like a globe, almost on a small um, apparatus just to keep it off of the floor. There is a hinge on it, so you reckon you could open it. And apart from that, to your right, there is a door with a green sigil on it. Oh, and then the most interesting thing about the room. The entire ceiling is filled with clear glass pipes that run and coil and weave right the way around. In the glass pipes are small glass orbs lined up in a row right the way around. And in each of those is a small creature. There are little fairies. There are hedgehogs. There are birds. There are snakes. There are spiders. There are tiny armoured warriors. And each of them seems to be emitting some different kind of elemental energy. You sort of follow these pipes with your eyes and they come round to an opening hanging in the centre of the room, ready to release a sphere. So the little creatures are in a sphere. A little bit like when you go and get one of those like machines where you put in 50p and turn it and you get a little ball out and then you pop out your little yeah. toy. Yeah, like a like a Pokemon yeah. ball almost. Yeah. One final detail is next to the green door and next to the door you've just come in, there are silver rods sticking out of the floor, about half a half a foot high. Do they look like the silver rods in the piston room? Exactly. Yes. Right, so there's two silver rods yeah. in mm-hmm. this room. There's two silver rods... In, in the, the piston, piston room. room. So let's connect yeah. those four rods together by two wires with the four clamps. Do they reach? Mm-hmm. 150 they foot of, of yeah. stuff we've got. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fine. Before we do that, to, to solve this, presumably, I was hoping there would be something different in this room to get through, but presumably we're all assuming that we just need to do the tasks in each side of the cube to solve it, right? I think so. That's the sort of big aim. Yeah, maybe. I feel like if we solve everything... Yeah. There's also that... Is silver- nobody concerned that there are living things trapped inside objects to power inventions? 
Like, does this not very seem wrong cons- to anybody? Very concerned, but we are trapped in a queue currently. <sighs> There's nothing we can do to help them. Yeah, I'm with you, Enki. Do help each other it's... at the moment. I yeah. don't know if they are living. They're kind of like giving off an elemental energy. I don't know if they're sort of. I don't think that's no, like an fairies, actual hedgehog. If, I, I think right. I think we can go down the moral rule of this. Yeah, absolutely. But I think we get Once sidetracked from like yeah, exactly. So are we all assuming we need to kind of solve each side? to solve the puzzle right yeah i think because that is the ultimate goal yeah is solving this yeah so we have to solve every civil room yes Yes. unless something's revealed otherwise yes yeah i can't see other solutions at the moment unless wiring up as you say guy wiring up the piston room to this hedgehog room is is gonna i'm petitioning for it to be the hedgehog room room. uh unless (laughs) wiring up the hedgehog room to the piston room is gonna short circuit yeah Good word. I'm up for giving it a go completely. I just wanted to touch base on what, what we are doing. Okay, so how are we solving this clue in here then? So hang on, let me just double check what we got. We've got a giant globe over here with a hinge that looks like the giant globe thing can open up. And that's on our left. That's right. Yeah, it's on the on the on the left hand wall. And then where are these And the green door is on the right. The green door's on the right. On the left, globe with hinge. Where are these? There's empty cylinders somewhere? They are either side of the large machine. That is on the far wall from you as you walk in. So there's a large machine and how many cylinders? Two. And they're either side of the machine? Either side of the machine and beneath them is a coiled cable attached to the bottom of these cylinders. Attached going from where to where? From the bottom of the cylinder to a clamp that is on top of the coil. So it's not connected to anything at the moment? No, neither cable is connected to anything. There's some loose cable, loose cable with a clamp that could connect in something. So does that need to be connected to the rods? Maybe. Or maybe it needs to be connected to these things up above energy sources. Yeah. Or to the machine? Yeah. Or to the iron sphere? Yeah. So is everyone moving into the the red room? The hedgehog room is... The, the hedgehog, hedgehog room. room? It's the hedgehog room? Yeah. Hed- hedging there. Still, has, has, has someone got the wand? Oh, I assume I've still got the wand. You've got the wand. Just because we're going to need to get back through to the obsidian room yeah. at some point. Yeah. Although we can go back through the wall room to get there if yeah. we do need to. I'm going to play with the wand. But if we've got the wand, then we're winning. Great. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. Is there anything in there from Kay? I'm going to keep good checking shout. in the rooms. Good shout. Mm, yeah, make an investigation check. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, as you all move into the um, into this room, looking at the pipes above your head, you close the door and it does click locked behind you as well. I assume it's gold? It is a gold sigil leading back into the piston room. Yeah. Um, 10 for an investigation check. No, unfortunately, nothing from Kay in here. I'm writing Hedgehog Room on the map. It's official, just so we all know. It's canon. Canon. 11. For investigation. No, again, unfortunately. As you sort of explore a little bit more, um, Gaius, you move up to the the machine at the end and you realise it's actually only got two switches on it. One of the switches says release and the other switch says extraction. Ooh. It's like a big grabber. Does it mean physical or magical extraction? That's the question, I guess. Or both. Yeah. Does it extract one of those things from that ceiling-y thing? Do we have to use the power of these creatures once they're in the batteries so they get released we put them in the batteries then we have to extract their magic through the wire to the mid to the silver rods in this mm. room to the silver rods in the switch room and uh, mm-hmm. the piston room turn the switch and then it lights the whole thing up like a christmas tree and we get out maybe yeah yeah i was thinking what's that. a christmas tree oh sorry like a like a uh, like a heart of spring flower is that the only holiday we know <laughs> yes the hardest like a heart of spring flower yeah. Right. Yeah. Like a fairy fired elemental. <laughs> By the hammer of Tuvia. So, sorry, David, just to check one more practical question. So, the silver, mm-hmm. the two silver rods in this room, where are they? Uh, they're at the base of each door, almost like a little door stop. Okay. Oh, so one by the green door and one by the gold door. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And the gold door is the one we just came from, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And both doors are currently locked. So, we have to solve this. So, we're trying to make giant batteries. I think you might be right, Gwen. Yeah. yeah. Using these big Yeah, cylinders. I reckon, yeah. I, 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 I assume, I mean, Enkidu, um, like, acquiesced to Guy's idea that if there's a clamp or a cylinder closer to the green door where we are looking to go, hook that up to the machine. And maybe, oh, I don't know. I, I, I'm thinking of Juna, what she said about, like, whatever's in the room is what's needed to leave the yeah. room. So hooking it up to a previous room might not be helpful. Yeah. Well, so I'm changing my mind. So We can't hook it up to the previous room now. We, yeah, we can't go back. We're locked in. Yeah, exactly. If you hadn't already done it. I'm going to go up and just 
press the release switch. Without hooking anything up. Gwendolyn is standing underneath where it releases just in case it drops straight onto the floor. Yeah, one of the, uh, one of the, one of the glass spheres suddenly drops out of the pipe. Uh, Gwendolyn, if you want to try and catch it. I do. Uh, it looks like it's going straight for the floor, but otherwise, uh, just make a quick dex check, please. Mm-hmm. Come on, monk. Oh, that's a six. Mm. As you're slightly distracted with, like, sort of the conversation, uh, this ball falls uh, and shatters on the ground. <sighs> Inside is, sort of standing up, shaking off the bits of glass, is a tiny fairy. <gasps> Wings sort of out, and then it sort of frowns a little bit, bursts into flames, and just starts <laughs> whizzing around the room. Uh, um, hello, fairy. Can you hear me? It flies over to you, Juna, and Juna, you instantly take... <laughs> three points of fire damage as it stops within five feet of you and you can feel the flames coming out of its wings like burning your face a little bit oh my gosh Gwendolyn grabs out her wand of fairy fire and casts it at the fairy (laughs) amazing Uh, make does it have to make a save for that Uh, yeah a dex saving throw dex save ooh um, (laughs) as you cast it it looks over uh, its shoulder darts out of the way and you hit Juna in the face instead oh no (laughs) Oh my god, fairy fire! <laughs> yeah. Any attacks on Juna at an advantage? This is my moment. Juna's nose is currently like circled with little glittering dust. <laughs> <laughs> it continues to zoom about the room, um, passing by Orin and Enkidu. You both take one Ow. point of fire damage as well. Oh, Guy times it right. He whips out his knife and he just goes and throws it. At <gasps> yep. Uh, make an attack roll. Kill the fairy. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> That's going to be um, 24 to hit. Oh, yeah. Roll your damage. 24. And fairy dies. Eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. This uh, this knife this knife pins this fairy right into the Ooh. wall. Almost there's a tiny dent in the brass. <laughs> and it sort of... <laughs> it goes limp. No. And the fire goes out. No. I think I've read a story. If you if you applaud and say I do believe in fairies, they come back. But I'm it like, can come back and burn us all more if we like. Oh yeah, no, maybe not. Now the fairy is pinned to the wall. Do we want to have a quick chat with it? I it's think it's probably dead. dead. <laughs> it's it's very dead, unfortunately. No, but can I not cast spare the dying on it then? Well, you can rush over and cast spare the dying actually, if you like. Yeah. It's pinned to the wall, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. it's not moving. It's impaled to the wall. Okay, I'll take a few points of fire potential damage. But... It's gone out, isn't it? It's gone out. It's yeah. Okay, then I'm going to quickly touch it and just be like, Fairy, we, we, we don't want to hurt you. I'm sorry about what just happened. Um, Quick question with Spare the Dying. Yeah. Um, does it make unconscious creatures conscious? Oh, I think it just stabilises them, zero, it? Yeah, zero hit points, I think. Oh, so... It would just stop it from dying completely, but it would just still be unconsciously pinned. We need to, to bring wall. it back in I, somewhere. I unpin, I unpin it from the wall and just cradle it in my hands um, a bit. Just like, oh, um, just just hold it. Um, like, okay, I'll, I'll hold it for whatever you, you want to do. Just, yeah, I I don't think he deserved what he got. Well, I, I want to talk to it. Yeah, but well, if it's, um, hang on. All right, just just to be. I'll clear. just hold on to it until you like uh, t- to just, find out what's going on in here. But yeah, how sure. how's that fairy gonna know? I don't think it's gonna know. It's gonna be like oh, I was trapped in a glass thing in a ceiling. It's like it's like asking a lab rat like what goes on in the lab, and the lab rat's at the most gonna be I like. Would... I but would it, ask that question to yeah. the lab rat. All right, guy will like play his loot, and the and the fairy gains back. Um, Hold on tight, Enkidu. Yeah. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not trapping it. I'm just, just cupping it, just holding it. Mm-hmm. Six points of healing. As sort of Gaius's song floats over to you, Enkidu, uh, you can feel the the little fairy start getting hotter and hotter in your hands, mm-hmm. which you know is a good sign. That's yeah. nice. It's not dead. Yeah. And then it starts to get excruciatingly hot for you. Okay. And you take another six points Oof. of fire damage. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, um, as you're what holding is going on? Fairy, fairy. We've just saved your life. What's going on here? Please, wait, please, wait, wait, please wait, wait, tell wait. us. Listen, listen. listen I, I, I take it away from Juna, even though it's burning my hands. That, look, I'm sorry. I know, I know you're not here because you want to. And, and, and as soon as you're freed, someone sticks a knife in you and, you know, you... you you're it's only because you damaged us. We will take you out of here. But and what is going on in this you're room? You're scared please? And, and confused, and people are asking you questions. So just, just, just give us a second. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry. We're handing you with questions. It stands up in your hand, in Kidu, as you're sort of talking to it, and whilst Juna is like sort of shouting over from behind you. I'm not shouting. I'm talking calmly. <laughs> it <laughs> looks, looks at you, yeah. frowns, 
and then just fly, starts flying off again, Fine. zooming around the room. Flies past Gwendolyn, who takes another four points of fire <laughs> That's damage. It. I'm taking past five. Orin, who takes another six yeah, points of fire damage. Who takes six? Yeah. You do, Orin. Oh, what? Oh, my uh, gosh. I'm going to cast Word of Radiance and say, stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> roll. Does it make a save, or do you uh, roll I think an it's an attack roll. Oh, I haven't my used gosh. this for a while. I don't think it wants to make friends with us, Enki. Do I, I admire your intentions, but I think it's going to just try. keep on burning us. I think this goes for every single thing above our heads. Yeah, every single that hedgehog thing that... looks nasty. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, sorry, constitution saving throw. Constitution save. Uh, it only got a seven, so Good. roll your damage. <laughs> Eight. Eight. Um, so as you sort of shout across the room at it, this little radiant burst suddenly explodes around it and it sort of crashes onto the floor and rolls out into just ash. Ooh. Oh, gosh. We tried. Yeah. To clarify, can we, like... If when once we get one of these balls, can we put them into the mm-hmm. cylinder? Uh, yeah, make a quick investigation of the each cylinder. Okay, fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, you realise the top can actually be unscrewed, so they can be dropped inside. Okay, is everybody ready to catch some of these things? If what, I... what are the two? Just just remind me what are the two options on the on the machine. There's drop a ball and there's something else. Extract. There's release and there's extract. Oh, so what we need to do is we need to collect up. the balls, grab the balls, and then, then put them in the cylinder. Then extract. Maybe clamping the clampy things onto things first. Yeah, good call. Yeah. Oh, by the way. Just before we do that, I don't know if I'm um, opening up a whole new can of worms. That big sphere thing over there with a hinge, should we just try opening it up first? Yes, definitely yes. yes. That's just so we know what we're working with before we start catching the magic flying ball things. Definitely. And hopefully if we don't release the things from the magic ball things, then we won't have to kill any more. Yeah, it'll just mm. harness their power harmlessly, looking over at Kido. So as you go over to look at this large sphere... It's a little bit of a heft to to just lift it up. And inside uh, are some arcane markings. And in the centre is an empty glass sphere. Does it look like you can open the sphere? The, the glass sphere? You can't open the glass one, but you can take it out. It's just sort of sat at the bottom of this larger iron sphere. And the arcane markings around the inside, they do they look like anything in particular? Mm, make an arcana check. Can I get, help him or do yeah, one as well? Yeah, with advantage. Thank yeah. you. Uh, that is 19. 19. Um, it's some kind of conjuration, you think? And you have a very quick test where you take out the, the glass sphere that's in there, close the, the larger iron sphere again, open it up, and there's another glass Oh, sphere. this thing makes glass spheres. Oh. I take that one out, do it again. Okay. <laughs> Woo. And uh, you now have three. <laughs> that's fun. Two in your hands, one in the thing. Oh, what if once you take the thing out, you put something else in? Then you close it and maybe it ends up in the sphere. Yeah. Gwendolyn like digs around in her bag and finds like uh, a bit of paper. She screws up into a bowl and she puts it in the the metal sphere Mm -hmm. ready to be closed. Yep. You close it. You open it again and you find that the piece of paper has been encased (sighs) in a glass sphere. That is very cool. Um, And Keely's going to look up at the glass. At the glass spheres in the glass like they're in pipes, aren't they? The things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that sphere. Like balls in pipes. Balls in pipes. He's going to look between the ones that orange just opened up and one Gwen's playing with and look back up. Uh, are they similar? They're identical. So if we smash a sphere, we want to put it in the iron sphere, don't we? Right, okay. I was going to say, uh, this is a character thing, not like, Inkidu's not being very helpful at the moment. He's going to take a look at the and see that they're similar and then he's just going to sit with the ashes for like a few minutes of the fairy. So maybe we could have put the fairy in one of the spheres. Sorry, fairy. We could have done, sorry, yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry, Inkidu, you seem rather upset. Are you okay? Could you imagine that if your life amounted to you just being some kind of, yeah, literal battery so that someone else can get rich of? The cost of your life to make someone else's fortune. And what do you get to say in the matter? You don't have any thoughts, you have any feelings, and you're driven mad by you're imprisoned and powerless. And look what, and this is what he got. He, he chokes up a bit and he's like, sorry. And he's just going to turn away and just, just sit there. June is going to come and put her hand on his shoulder and give him guidance, 1d4, and say, Enkidu, you're completely right. This is it's not a very nice way to live at all. Um, you, you, you sit there for a moment, take the time you take. Mm-hmm. And she just looks at the ceiling like, we do have to solve this room. <laughs> 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 also, we can... Take some balls with us," she says, tapping the caddy. Um, 
well, to... I appreciate the gesture, but if we can't free them all, I guess, what what is the point? Well, we might be able to free them all once we've sold this room. Mm-hmm. No reason why not. We can't help anything if we're stuck in here, unfortunately. Yeah, you're right. And yeah, and Kiri will get up um, and say, well, yeah, well, there's no hoping anyone, like you said, Gwendolyn, if we're stuck here, um, let's get out of here. Um, so what have we discovered? Let's go over this again. Um, well, we can put things in a globe and then they get put in a glass globe thing, like mm-hmm. Gwen's bit of paper there. It's a very useful bit of paper in a globe. Yeah. Yeah, right. Mm. That's like a magic trick. You can show that to people and be like, "How did I get this bit of paper in this globe?" Ooh. Mm-hmm. Um. So what we could do is maybe like fashion like a thing to catch all of these like falling balls because they go in like one at a time, right? So like if we like I don't know, use my cloak. Like he takes off the cloak and like holds it out like a sheet almost. It's like we could catch it in this. Yeah. It'd be a lot easier. And mm-hmm. then any that fall, you know, and do smash, we could just like I don't know, in some way like get it in that iron globe thing and yeah. put it back in the Do bowl. we have to do something that risky? Why don't we just go up and unscrew it? Unscrew what? The bolt. The the balls from up above. Why do we have to release it and then risk oh. letting them fall and smash and then wasting another yeah. life? Uh, is it 60 foot up? Oh, yeah. Are they... That's fine. That's 60 feet yeah. high. Yeah. Oh, um, you can fly. Obviously, Enkidu oh, yeah. can fly. Yeah. You've got Aggie and... And uh, Tuna oh, can no, fly as a cat well. now, yeah. isn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Let's let's see if, let's yeah. See if we can go. Yeah. Ahead. Yeah. So I'll fly up, and Kili will fly up. Do you want to go? Um, yeah, <laughs> um, Aggie is with him as well. She yeah, probably... I'll I'll fly up as well. Just yeah, partly because I think she wants to show and Kili some support. Sure, I think he could mm-hmm. probably do it on his own, but oh. <laughs> it'll be nice for them to do it together. Sure. Yeah, so you both gather under the um, sort of the opening of the pipe, sort of hands out sort of using your coat and even bit of cloak just to make sure that like you're definitely going to catch this thing that the, the path is completely blocked by your hands mm-hmm. who's pressing release yeah sure i can i'll go and press release and straight away one of the uh the glass orbs falls out into this little like catching net that you've created mm-hmm. and you see inside uh, a little bird oh. um sort of hopping about almost like a little chaffinchy thing sure but as it's hopping backwards and forwards in this glass sphere, there's little bolts of lightning sort of zapping off of it, almost like one of those, um, what are those things you touch and then suddenly, like, with the... Oh, the... the, oh, the... Like a Van de Graaff? Oh, wow. Is that what Van they're called? Graaff oh, no, like the... Yeah. the little domes. You touch yeah. it and then yeah. suddenly, like, it sends electricity to your fingers or what? Not electricity, but, like, yeah. Oh, no, I'm thinking of the one that makes your hair stand on end. Oh, what am I talking about? I know what you're talking about. Are you talking about a glass ball yeah. with, that you would buy from the yeah. gadget yeah. Store back in the day? Yeah, like, yeah. is yeah it's yeah apparently it's called a plasma globe, plasma globe yeah mm-hmm. who knew <laughs> it kind of looks like one of those with this bird hopping about inside bolts of electricity dancing off of this bird and hitting hitting the outside especially where like you're holding it so, wait bird in the ball lightning inside coming off the bird coming off the is bird is it like a lightning bird I oh, shout out <laughs> oh right cool you said chaffinch, and I just imagine a normal-looking chaffinch, but I didn't think fantasy chaffinch. Yeah. I mean, yeah. surprisingly, it does look like a normal little chaffinch. It's just surrounded by electricity. Okay, sure. And I'm, I'm assuming that we were flying to catch it and bring it down, right? That's why we flew. Yeah. 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 So we sort of caught it and brought it down to them, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you, yeah, you, yeah. You, you, you were using my cloak as well, so it didn't yeah, have yeah, to fall yeah. as far. Oh, uh, we yeah, used yeah. the cloak. Mm-hmm. Cool, yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. So we bring it down. Yeah. Sorry, I'm back on track. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What would you like to do with it? We're going to have to put this in that thing, aren't we? There's two cylinders. Yeah. Guy, we'll unscrew the cylinder on the, the top of the cylinders. Which one are we putting in? Uh, both, I presume, or one? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Do we need to match up the types of we, energy? We only have ten yeah. minutes until the flying stops. Yeah. Just to let you know. So gather as many as we can yeah. and start gently filling up the cylinders? Yeah. 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 And Kiri would take so his coat off up. and use it as a, yeah, just catch some more stuff. Yeah, cool. In which case, we'll say that within 10 minutes, I'll say that you can actually empty the entire pipe above you. Um, so, like, with trips from with uh, Juno and Kiri flying up and down, like, you, you start gathering these little rows of, of glass orbs just along the, the farthest wall, each with a different kind of little creature on, and each with a, a different elemental. There's some fire, there's some 
puffing smoke. There are some that are freezing the glass around them. There are more electrical type ones, but you basically have a choice of, of any that you need. Okay. And there's two cylinders. They look identical? They look identical, yeah. There's a large machine yeah. with release and extract. Mm-hmm. There's two clamps not going to anywhere yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the clamps are attached to the wire, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yep. I guess we put these clamps onto those metal rod things by the doors to me. Yeah. I guess. Yep. So do we want to put all particular types of one energy into one cylinder and other types of another energy into another? Or do we want to mix them up? Or We haven't seen anything from K, have we? Oh, yeah. No, but I didn't do a very good look for it. No, I'm sure you did a very thorough look, Juna. Don't, don't do yourself down. Thank you, Warren. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think Juna is going to, like pull out a a battery that we have in the caddy again to compare the battery to the cylinders and how similar do they look. Whereas before it was like having a car battery down to a like a AAA or whatever, Mm -hmm. uh, this is like having a car battery compared to like a jet engine. Mm. Cool. No, that's not true. They're not that big. Oh my God. I know what you mean, but like split the difference. But yeah, like a sort of a much bigger version. Yeah, it's basically a bigger version, but it is an identical thing. And they're they're not like, they're not even 60 foot. Like you can quite easily reach the top of each one. Well, I think you might be right, maybe. Like, put all of one type. Have we got more than one type of with the like lightning bird? Is there like other lightning things? Yeah, as you do a quick scan across this uh, this whole collection uh, that you have, there is only one other lightning creature, and it's a small hedgehog. It seems to have little lightning zaps coming out of its out of its spines. So there's one lightning bird, one lightning hedgehog. Can I now try and start matching up all the others and see how many of all the different elements there are? Yeah, there are five or six fire uh, sort of. That look like they're fire base. There are six or seven that are creating like frosted glass, and there are about another ten that are like variations of like smoke or swirling air. How many spheres does it look like would fill up one cylinder? To fill it up, you reckon you could probably fit three or four. But electricity is the only one that's got two. Everything else got multiple. You, we reckon we could fit three or four in that in each one if you wanted to. Or do we just try one electricity, one in each? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's go for it. I've put the battery that we've been carrying in the tea caddy back in the tea caddy, just FYI. Mm-hmm. So you sort of unscrew both lids, drop the electrical hedgehog into one, drop the uh, electrical chaff inch, lightning chaff inch in the other, screw them uh, things back on. You've connected the clamps to the two rods, haven't you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then all that means is somebody needs to hit the other button. I'll do it. Thanks, guy. I slightly don't want to anymore. I'm just gonna hold. I'm gonna hold in Kidu's hand whilst mm. uh, guy does that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, from the top of each cylinder, sort of a spark zaps down into this sort of glass sphere, catching it around the edge on each one, and sort of almost levitating it to the centre of of the cylinder. And then each one shatters, and for a brief moment, you just see the outline of these poor creatures as they are suddenly converted into pure electrical energy that remains where they are zapping backwards and forwards. And Keely just drops to his knees and he's just devastated. And both doors unlock. Oh, Oh, man. I think we should end the episode there. Oof. Oh, I hate this family. Yeah, they're awful. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. I was all excited about my wand. I'm less excited about my wand. Yeah, they were not lying when they said something was going on in the Golden Forest, were they? You have been listening to David Knight as your Dungeon Master, Ben Galpin as Orin, Chris Watts as Gaius. Daryl Bailey as N. Kidu, Grace Kelly Miller as Gwendolyn, and Vicky Gaskin as Juna. Original music by David Knight. Please tell your friends, subscribe, and follow us on all social media. Thank you for listening to No.